We're seeing people are watching it, people are affected by it. I, I say this about the movie, that it's like really hard to watch, but important to see. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I see, I've seen, I see the links before they air, and every time, I've seen them hundreds of times, and it still, still uh, moves me the same way. This week, I had a chance to be a part of a panel where we discussed the new Spike TV docuseries, Time, the Khalif Browder story, executive produced by movie mogul Harvey Weinstein and rapper Jay-Z. Khalif Browder was just 16 years old when he was arrested for allegedly stealing a backpack and imprisoned without a conviction for three years at New York's notorious Rikers Island Correctional Facility, most of it spent in solitary confinement. You have the right to remain silent and refuse to answer any questions. I just need to get my story out. They said most likely we're going to let you go home. But then I never went home. Rikers. Finally, Jay. He's in Rikers Island for three years over a backpack. You're not going to make me say I did something just so I could go home. It is torture. There's no other word for it. Khalif was my son. I know what he went through. Mom didn't walk away like it's okay. It's not okay. Ultimately, Khalif's case was dismissed and he was allowed to go home. But the young man who emerged from Rikers was not the same teenage boy who went in. He suffered from depression and paranoia. And on June 6, 2015, Khalif Browder took his own life. And joining me now, Khalif's brother, Dion Browder, and creator of the documentary series, Juliet Nason. Thank you both for being here. Um, we had a chance to meet um, the other day, the other night, uh, at this amazing town hall that Jay-Z and Harvey Weinstein put together for Spike um, and Dion. It, it, it's such a difficult story to, to, to talk about, um, but your family has an incredible strength. Um, I know you also lost your mom. Yep. Um, how did what happened to Khalif impact her? I think psychologically she broke down. Um, we talk about how Khalif was in solitary confinement, but if you think about it, once Khalif came home, uh, she put herself there as well. Um, and mentally, she put herself into a room and never came out. I um, mean, when he passed away, it just, it just intensified everything. I think um, the breakdown inside her heart, um, the, all the emotion that she felt, it was very big and challenging for him to just be in there, yeah. but even more challenging to see what he was going through on the outside, mm -hmm. and even worse to sit there and to know that she found her own son hanging in the backyard, and mm -hmm. it destroyed her life completely. And, and, and I think what people need to understand, I mean, first of all, he was a kid. He was, he was a child. He was 16 right. years old. But this is a family with seven children, yes. uh, some adopted siblings, some you know, uh, birth siblings. So this was a big family. It's not as if you guys had $900 just sort of hanging around. Right. Um, you know. With my father leaving, it was really tough. My mother really struggled to maintain a household with um, seven children. Um, so she tried to divide up all the money between each and every one of us and not including herself. Um, so the one thing that she prided herself in was taking care of her children um, without taking care of her own self. So that's something I really looked to her for because she really struggled um, yeah. growing up. Um, we, there was moments where we didn't have food and she wouldn't eat just so she could take care of us. So we were not in the money at all, um, but she made it her best effort to try to raise that money within those two weeks to try to get him out. And, and Julia, you know, this was a, um, a mammoth undertaking, but it's also sort of, it's, it, it, it really reminds you that when we talk about Black Lives Matter, Khalif was n generally not put in the hashtags because he didn't die in the encounter with police. But this is a far more common story. You're talking about a small, for a lot of people, what they consider to be a small amount of money, but it may as well have been $9 billion for a family that doesn't have it. Right. But somebody who was not convicted of a crime, how can it be that someone can spend three years in Rikers without being convicted of anything? It's incredible. I mean, the, l working on this project, I just learned that Khalif's story is not unusual. The mass incarceration system in this country is a form of social and economic control, and it's doing exactly what it's designed to do. Yeah, and, and for a young man like this, there was also the issue of stop and frisk yes. um, that's a, that you guys get at in the piece. So a stop and frisk was rampant when Khalif was arrested, and I mean, in 2011, 700,000 people in New York City were stopped. And the vast majority of them were black and Hispanic young men. Yes, 9% were white. Yeah. And, and w at the town hall, um, Dion, you know, Jay-Z talked about his own experiences growing up in New York. Um, he seemed to really kind of relate to your family and to Khalif in just the way you, in you're growing up. Is stop and frisk something that the other young men in the family have dealt with? Yes, um, especially uh, Kamal, uh, one of Khalif's closest brothers, um, because they were so close with... Uh, 
you know, their, their relationship with each yeah. other, you know, they would hang out with each other. So a lot of the things that they would do on the outside, as far as teenage wise, um, they would definitely get profiled just by walking outside the street. Even being outside late at night, um, definitely get profiled just from walking, like in the situation with Kali, just walking from a party, you can definitely yeah. get stopped. And, and profiled just off the basis of nothing. What kind of um, what kind of a kid was Khalif before he went into <laughs> a very big, bubbly, boisterous personality? Like he had, he always wanted to dip and dab in everything, like to be a part of something. Because of course he was the youngest, so he tried to make his impact strong because he was the youngest, and he wanted to stand out and say, "Hey, look at me! This is what I can do." Um, so he had a very fun-loving, game-oriented person always wanted to be with friends, yeah. um, wanted to be with the siblings and have that family moment. Yeah, and Julie, you know, the, the, what makes this piece so powerful is that you do, you're able to have Khalif's voice in it and his yeah. mom. Um, tell me about that experience of having them actually, in a sense, narrate their own story. Well, we felt it was so important to be as intimate as possible in telling this story. We wanted to show this massive catastrophe of the criminal justice system on an intimate level so people could really feel his heart and soul and your heart and soul as a family. Yeah, what do you hope that people take away from watching this? As people should, this is a five-part series. Uh, part three is going to air, six-part series. And part three is going to air, tell us when. It's going to air next Wednesday night at 10 o'clock on Spike TV. And, and tell, what do you want people to get out of it? I want people to understand the criminal justice system and the ins and outs and how people think it's broken, but actually it's designed to do exactly what it's doing. Yeah. And through Khalif's eyes, you can really feel the heart and soul of a, we're trying to really humanize the story. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, and his mom and his brothers and sisters, and it, it's, it, this is a family tragedy. Yes. Um, Julia Nason, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Dion, um, it was so, it was such an honor to meet you. I met you and your, uh, two of your brothers uh, and your sister. Yes. Um, just an honor for you to let the world into your family and to allow us to embrace you. Um, our prayers, our thoughts, everything are with you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And um, the time, the Khalif Browder story airs Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern on Spike TV. You must watch it. That hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.